I'm Jennifer Kaiser and I'm the Special Events Manager for Special Olympics Missouri in our St. Louis office. I hope everybody is healthy and safe right now. I know we are experiencing a very strange time and we're thinking of all of you and hoping everyone is doing well. Um, everybody's really stuck at home right now for the most part and so I thought I would show you um, a nice little craft today that you can do with um, probably things that you can have at home that you have uh, at, at your own house right now or things that um, you can use at home. I'll talk about some modifications for things if you don't have specifically what I have here. Um, we are going to be making a book. Um, I know that sounds a little strange. These books are not going to have any words in them. They're going to be blank. Um, you can make them with lined paper or um, blank copy paper. Uh, there's lots of uses for these. Um, you can use them to collect recipes in, to uh, use as a journal, um, if you collect quotes. Um, if you're an artist, use them as a sketchbook. They're great for gifts, they're great for Mother's Day, or for friends who journal or who draw. Or who draw. So it's really, there's a, a whole lot of, of uses for these and they're very versatile. So I'm going to show you a couple examples of things that I have done in the past. We're going to do um, a very simple book today to start. Um, I'm hoping to make further videos. We'll get a little more complicated as we go along. Um, but I will show you a few examples. Um, this is a nice little book. They can be any size, which is great. Um, I just actually photocopied this um, picture onto um, a thick piece of paper, and that's, what, that's where this picture came from. So this is a book that I keep quotes in. So I keep this in my nightstand drawer and I write quotes when I find ones that I like. And they have a, a stitch binding, so you sew all the pages together like this. Another kind of book that I've done in the past um, are hardcover books. That's this one. This one's held together with magnets. I used this for a journal for a trip to Florida several years ago. And the really cool thing about this one is the very fancy binding. I wanted it to kind of look like the ocean, so I picked blues. Um, and kind of sea glass looking beads for this one. This one, I've also worked in leather before. So this is a leather journal, closes with a snap, and it has um, mostly white pages, but I added a few colored pages in there just to make it a little fancier. And then this has a very fancy stitch binding. This, you might not believe it, but this is actually a book as well. And I'm gonna save this for the end. I'll show you what's inside when we're done making our book. So this um, is really elaborate and it's really kind of impractical to use, but it's just it was just a fun thing to make. So that's why I have this. So today we're gonna make a very simple book like this. We're gonna use ribbon to bind the book. Um, I used a little accent paper. Uh, I picked a cover and a back cover page. Uh, in purple. So you can pick any color, any pattern. One of my favorite things to do is shop in the paper aisle in Michaels. Um, so that's where I get a lot of my papers from. This actually, this, this little um, spine accent is something that you can put on or not put on. It's up to you. I just think it kind of finishes the end of the book nice. Um, the pages in this book happen to be blank. I just used plain old copy paper. So that's all you need. Um, this book is actually the size of a piece of copy paper, so I didn't even have to cut or measure. All I did was um, cut my cover pages down to the size that I need. So I'm going to show you how to make this book today, but we're going to make it with notebook paper because the great thing about notebook paper is it already has the holes punched in it. So if you were making it with copy paper, you would just need to punch your own holes. That's the only difference. So I'm going to talk about what we need today. We have copy paper. You can make your book as thick or as thin as you want. I think I have about maybe 20 pieces of paper here, but you can make it thicker if you'd like. And then you need two pieces of paper for the front cover and the back cover. And then you need a fancy little coordinating paper for the spine accent that we used on this. We're gonna bind the book with ribbon. You can actually use anything for binding a book. You can use thread, you can use ribbon, you can use twine, you can use, um, you can even use twist ties if you want. You can really use anything that will hold the book, go through the holes and hold the book together. Um, pair of scissors, a hole punch for the covers, and you can even use this kind of hole punch uh, if you have it at home. 
If you have to cut your paper, if you want a smaller book, you can cut them by hand or one of these little handy cutting boards is always nice. It's not, not necessary, but if you have one, they're great. And then I have a glue stick too. I'm gonna to show you a little accent that we're gonna do with the book at the end. And if you have a needle, you can use a needle for sewing. I'm gonna show you a way to do it without using a needle, but because I have one, I just laid it out here to um, remind you that you can also use that. So the first thing we're gonna do is make a sandwich. Um, we're gonna lay down the back cover first. We're gonna put our other pages in the middle and then we're gonna lay down the cover on top of that. And then just kind of line it all up so all of your holes are lined up so you can see through them. And then this piece of paper, all I did with this, you can make this any size you want. Um, I just chose, I think this is probably about two inches, so I made it four inches total, so you have two inches on the front and two inches on the back, and then fold it in half and then we're gonna line it up like this. Now, one of the easiest ways to punch holes in your covers is to do this. I should have shown this to you first. Okay, so put all of your pages together like this. Line them all up so they're all even on the bottom. And you just need one piece of notebook paper like this. Line them all up and then just take your hole punch and punch them in all three places. That's the easiest way to do it. And then you know that all of your holes are exactly the same same place. So we'll remake my sandwich here. Line everything up. Then you take your folded paper and put them together like this. really what the book is it is um, going to look like so like I said you can make these pages bigger if you want this to stick out longer you don't even have to use them at all um, if you don't want the accent down the side I just think it, it, it kind of finishes the book off nicely so I have some blue ribbon that coordinates with the book that I'm making now I don't usually measure I just use myself to measure and I kind of do this and that's about all I need so you can measure if you'd like. It's I mean, somewhere around four feet, but you know, you can kind of just guess. So when you cut this off, one of the things I do is I cut my ribbon at a really sharp angle like that. Because if you don't have a needle, you can use the point of this as your guide through your holes. And it makes it a little easier than a, a straight cut across. I'm gonna use a needle today only because I lost my hole punch with the big hole. So my holes in my book are kind of small um, because I can only find this hole punch. So that's my fault. Anyway, now that you have your ribbon cut and your book all ready to go, it's time to sew the book together, to actually bind the book. And this is actually called a stab binding. So it, there are all the different kinds of names for the different kinds of stitches you use to bind a book, and this is called a stab binding. So you come up from the bottom like this, and we're really going to make a figure eight through the book like this. That's exactly how we're going to go through it. So that's a, an easier way to think about it if, you're, if you get confused about where to go next. So you come up through the bottom, and then you go, or come up through the middle, I'm sorry, come up through the middle. And then you go down through the bottom, pull, and you can leave your ribbon twisted if you want, or you can flatten it out. It is really up to you what you want it to look like. I'm going to flatten mine out today. Okay, so you have a tail where you first went in. You have to remember to leave the tail so you have something to tie your bow with. So we've got down through the bottom hole. Now we're going to come back up through that middle hole. That middle hole gets a, a lot of use in this. So we're going to come back through the middle hole. I'm going to straighten out our ribbon a little bit. Okay. So now we've done the first part of the eight. We've gone down and around. Now we're going to go down through the top hole. And straighten out our ribbon a little bit. Okay. 
so our ribbon is flat. And then we're going to come back up through that middle hole. That's the last time we go through the holes. Okay, we'll straighten out our ribbon. And then you have two tails left over. Your book is bound, the pages aren't going to fall out, and you have a tail on either side. And now it is up to you where to put the bow. So you can put the bow on the front of the book or you can put it on the spine. It is totally up to you where you would like it. I kind of like them on the front because I just think it looks fancy. And then we just tie a bow. And you tie your bow right over the top of that center hole. If you want it on the side, you tie your bow on the side. Okay, so there's the first part of the bow. And then we tie the actual bow. Kind of adjust your ribbons the way you like them. Okay. I usually tie a double knot in my bows just to make sure that my book does not come apart. So tie the loops back together again for your double knot and fluff them back up. So now you have a tail here and a tail here. Um, it uh, Every single time I do this, I always end up with a tail, one tail too long. So all you have to do is cut that tail off, kind of fluff everything up the way you like it, and you have a book. Your book is done. You have a beautiful book. You can use it for yourself. You can give it away as a gift. There are so many different things you can do with this book, like I said before. For you ELP students or anyone who is on a Special Olympics committee, these are great for taking notes. Um, and I am going to add a little embellishment to this just to show you how one of the ways you can personalize this. Um, I just cut two squares, one from the cover paper and one from the accent paper. So all I'm going to do is take a glue stick, put a little glue on the back of this, and put it in the center of this so it makes a little frame around the page. Bunch of glue on here. If you don't have fancy paper like this at home, construction paper works. Any plain paper you have at home. I'm going to put this right on the cover of my book. This way you can put your someone's name on here, you can put your name on here, you can write happy birthday, you can pick a quote that you really like. Um, it's just a, a way, one of the ways to personalize these books. So you can also do drawings on the front if you would like. There are a million different things you can do to personalize this. So there's your book. Okay, now that you have made your fancy books, I am going to show you what this crazy book looks like. So this comes apart like this, has a little lid. The sides all open up, turn around. It looks like that inside. So all the binding is down the side this way and this way. And then to open this book, you pull it apart like that. So really impractical. Probably couldn't use this to take notes in your ELTS class, but it's just something pretty that I made and it looks nice look, sitting on the shelf. So thanks for joining me today and I hope to see you again soon. Stay safe.